Hi everyone. First, I'd like to thank you all for this opportunity to talk about my research. So my research is also looking at refugees, but it's looking at the Jordanian context and it's comparing the experience of Iraqi refugees at the beginning of the millennium to Syrian refugees today. Well, the main similarities are that these refugees in Jordan are both urban populations rather than camp-based populations. In addition, they are from middle-income source countries, and that is reflected in their burden of disease, which has a higher prevalence of chronic and non-communicable diseases rather than infectious diseases. This influences how health care is provided to these populations. The key difference between these two groups is that the Jordanian government has done more to help Syrian refugees now than it did to help Iraqi refugees in the past. Syrian refugees in the beginning of their time in Jordan were offered free health care for primary and secondary uh, care. It was fully subsidized, rather for Iraqi refugees, it was only partially subsidized. However, this did not affect the access by a large amount. Rather than improving access for the Syrian population, it was consistent over time. And I argue that this is due to many barriers remaining in place and not being addressed. These include indirect costs, such as the cost of transportation and the cost of registration in order to get the free health care, as well as a lack of prioritization of health care, especially for chronic diseases, stigma surrounding mental and reproductive health, discrimination by the host population against refugees, confusing processes of access, as well as lack of knowledge of how these processes work, which prevents Syrian refugees from actually using the services offered by the Jordanian government, and conflict with the host population due to scarce resources being trying to be divided around many people. Jordan is a small country and there are a lot of refugees within its borders. So to prove access, I believe that we must address multiple barriers. We can't just address direct costs. We must also direct address the many other things that prevent Syrian refugees and other refugees from ex accessing the health care that's available. So different strategies to do this would be to decrease costs, both direct and indirect. And leveraging the humanitarian development nexus can be a helpful way to do this, as it focuses on a long-term solution that improves the system so uh, resources can be allocated more efficiently and in the long term, access can be better. This can help also decrease discrimination because then the refugee population is also benefit benefiting the host population rather than just focusing on benefiting refugees. Also important is education. Education regarding stigma can help reduce stigma around mental illness and reproductive health. And education about the importance of early detection and continuous care can help Im increase prioritization of health care among refugees. It's also important to educate the host population about the benefits of having refugees rather than focusing on escape using refugees as scapegoats. Finally, I think innovative solutions have a part to play. There are a lot of doctors in Jordan that are refugees and not able to practice as a result. If, you, if there were to be a strategy to allow them to practice, that could help address the shortage in doctors. In addition, cell phones are very common for refugees, and therefore they could be used to disseminate information more fully. In short, I recommend in all situations to focus on comprehensive strategies that look at multiple barriers at once, rather than relying on w addressing one barrier to create a solution. Thank you.